guys. Welcome to Tea Fairy Storytime. Do you see my little friend? He's a little squirrel. Do you know why I have a squirrel? Because we're going to read a book about a squirrel. Do you guys like squirrels? There's a lot of squirrels out right now. Everywhere I go, I see squirrels all over the place. And you know what they're doing? They're collecting acorns, right? Yeah, you eat acorns, don't you? I even had some on my porch yesterday, and my dog was barking at them. I'm going to try to include some video footage of my dog barking at the squirrels, but we'll see what happens. I don't know if it'll work out. But squirrels are very cute, and they eat nuts, and then they bury them everywhere, don't you? They bury them everywhere. And did you know they forget like more than half of where they, where they bury them? So there's just nuts buried everywhere, and they don't even know where they put them. Isn't that silly? That's silly, isn't it? Yes, it's silly. And it's also fall, so I've got a nice pumpkin and some fall leaves. These leaves are made of copper, actually. They're kind of shiny. They're from Copperland Arts, and they were crafted in Michigan, in Linden, Michigan. And they were given to me by a friend many, many years ago. And she actually lives here in Maryland. Her name is Becky, and she is from Michigan. All right, now this book is from a friend of mine named Donna Howard, and she has been anxious for me to read this book since April or May when she sent it to me. It has taken me a while to get to it because I've had so many books to read. But this book is called Bright Eyes, Bushy Tail, and the Nutty Narrows Bridge, and it is written by Donna Howard and illustrated by Jill Schiff. And if you can see the Nutty Narrows Bridge, and there's squirrels up on it. And it goes over the road so that the squirrels don't get hit by cars. And there's some of the acorns I was talking about, and the fall leaves. And I love that the shape of the thing on the page is a squirrel itself. The other day I saw a squirrel climbing up the side of my building. I didn't know that they could do that. I knew that they climbed trees. I did not know that they climbed bricks. This book is dedicated to Michael and to all children who are perhaps a bit squirrely, but are always delightfully nutty. To Tanya T. Ferry, thank you for being such a strong supporter of children's literacy. Regards, Donna Howard. Thank you, Donna. Super excited. I hope that you guys are watching. Bright eyes and bushy tails scampered down the trunk of their treetop home in Longview, Washington. They were followed by Grandpa Grayson. Winter would soon come. The days were growing shorter and colder, so they were eager to play while they could. Let the games begin, declared Bushy Tail as he began to chase his sister around the park. Catch me if you can, she called back, zooming away. After a while, Bright Eyes said, I'm hungry. Let's see if we can find some nuts. The two searched and searched, but with disappointing results. Rats, said Bushy Tail. No luck. Someone must have eaten us, beaten us to it. They ate all the nuts. Look. They're digging holes everywhere because they forgot where they buried their nuts, maybe. I don't know. Resting on a grassy knoll, Bright Eyes turned to her brother and said, Do you know why the squirrel crossed the road? Nuh uh. Why? asked Bushy Tail. To get to the other side, silly. The two started laughing so hard that they couldn't stop. They tumbled down the hill until they landed with a bump and a thump on their little rumps at the foot of one humongous squirrel. And this is the bottom of the humongous squirrel, and it's going up, 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 up. Do you see its head? No? There's its head. It is humongous. Look how little they are, and look how big he is, and he's got a giant nut. Whoa! exclaimed Bright Eyes. Look at that! Bushy Tail's dark eyes shone with excitement as they traced the distance from the giant squirrel's feet up, up, up to the tippy top of his enormous head. And look, his tail is even taller. Wow. Just then, Grandpa Grayson succeeded in catching up with them. 
the curious duo began asking questions about a mile a minute. Who is that? Where did he come from? Why is he here? All right, all right, grumbled, gram, grumbled Grandpa Grayson. Hold on to your acorns. Stop your chattering and settle down. I'll tell you the story of how that statue came to be in our park. Here's, here he is, many, many years ago. In this same park lived a squirrel named Chester. He was a natural athlete and an acrobat. One day he was out practicing his stunts when drifting across Olympia Avenue came the enticing aroma of roasted goobers, I mean peanuts. There he is dreaming of peanuts. Why did he say goobers first? That's weird. Well, Chester's whiskers started twitching and his nose wrinkled in delight. Soon his whole body quivered in anticipation of tasting the awesome goodness of those peanuts. But to do that, he had to cross Olympia Way to get to Civic Court where the fine nutty feast was laid out. It was a dangerous journey filled with billowing smoke and a big menacing car and trucks zooming by this way and that. Look, there's a Volkswagen. That's one of my favorite kinds of vehicles. And it says ABC 123 Washington. And then here's a car and that one says AAA 109 Washington. And here's a hot roasted peanut stand right here. And the smell, you can see the smell. And here's our little friend, the Chester the squirrel trying to get across the street to the peanuts. Chester knew he couldn't, he shouldn't do it, but he really wanted those peanuts. So he made up his mind. He would not let anything stop him from getting those nuts. Perched on the curb, he took a deep breath and leapt into action. Cars and trucks roared towards him. Chester ran as fast as he could. He was so scared, he zigged and zagged around the cars and trucks that roared towards him head on, brakes squeaking and horns blaring as Chester attempted to run to the other side. I see squirrels running across the street all the time. One of them doesn't have a tail. I like to call him Squirrel Nutkin. I can't look, said Bright Eyes, covering her eyes with her hands. Did he, did he make it, asked Grandpa. Yes, Chester finally made it safely to the other side. Phew, exclaimed Bright Eyes. Too close, chimed Bushytail. Yup, said Grandpa Grayson. That's just what a fella named Amos Peters thought, too, who had witnessed Chester's terrifying quest. There's Amos Peters. This is nuts, Amos thought. Someone should do something. It's a matter of squirrel safety and people's safety, too. And that's when Amos had his now famous idea. I'm a builder, Amos exclaimed. I'll build a bridge, a squirrel bridge. Then the squirrels could cross the street and stay safe. That's a smart idea. I like that idea. But you'd have to build bridges all over where we live <laughs> because there's so many squirrels. Oh, these pages are sticking together again. Amos asked two architect friends to draw a blueprint for the bridge. Do you know what an architect is? An architect is somebody who designs buildings and they draw all the pictures. They have to be really good at drawing. He then went to the town's council to ask for approval to build the bridge. He wondered if they would think his idea was nutty. Pun intended. But they loved it and instantly approved his request. What a wonderful idea, exclaimed the councilwoman. She looks very happy. We'll call it the Nutty Narrows Bridge after the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Tacoma, Washington. Can you tell the author probably lives in Washington? Here's the Washington Post. There's another Washington Post. Here's the New York Times and another New York Times. The Longview Daily News and another Longview Daily News. And it says the very first squirrel bridge, the first squirrel bridge in the world is in Longview. Breaking news, the first squirrel bridge has been built in Longview, Washington. It is, a na it is named Nutty Narrows Bridge. Amos gathered supplies to build the bridge. He used an old fire hose and some TV antennas for support. 
As soon as Amos built the bridge, it became famous. Newspapers wrote stories about it, and a big celebration was held on the day it was raised. Wow, said Bright Eyes, what a great guy. Yup, agreed Grandpa Grayson, and that's why this monument is here. It was put up in Amos's honor. When you are kind and helpful, big things can happen. You see the train in the background? I like trains. Every year a celebration is held, Squirrel Fest, and a brand new bridge is put up. Everyone has a nutty fine time. Now, let's get some of those delicious peanuts. Longview, Washington, March 19th, 1963, Nutty Narrows Bridge, constructed by Amos J. Peters Construction. And here are some people with some squirrel costumes on. You can tell because there's a human hand here and a human face there. And squirrels don't wear clothes. Well, I guess in this book they do because those guys all have clothes on. And here is the author, Donna Howard, and this is the illustrator, Jill Shee. Thank you, Donna, for sending in Bright Eyes, Bushy Tail, and The Nutty Narrows Bridge. I hope you enjoyed it. I did too. What a fun book. It's me, Mrs. There. Howard. Um, I thought you might like to make a nature craft with me today. And to do that, you'll need to first go about your yard or your park and find various sizes and shapes of leaves, seeds, and grasses. And you'll want a variety. These here are ash leaves, and I thought they might make a good bushy tail for our squirrel. We're gonna make a leaf squirrel. And these come from the bear bush. If you don't have the same leaf, it doesn't matter. You can find one somewhat similar. These leaves, I thought would make good ears for the squirrel. This here is a maple leaf. We can cut the leaves too. So we'll cut off a little bit here to make his paws and his feet. And then for his eyes, this here is a seed from a poppy, and this is a wild rose hip, and we'll use that together to make his eyes. The only other things you'll need is something to glue it on. I'm using just a piece of construction paper and a pair of scissors to trim what you don't want. Okay. So to get started, you just kind of want to play with your leaves, and you want to decide which way you like them. So you might want to do that. And then I think I want to cut off some of these stems so that they're not that big. This is gonna be his body, this big fat leaf. So I'm gonna set that kind of there. And again, you can just play with it. Until you glue it down, you can feel free to play with it and adjust it however. This leaf I think will make his head. Again, I'm gonna take the stem off. And I'm just gonna kinda of put his head up there. If you think it's a little too big, you can cut it down. I kind of like that. Now we'll use, um, we need something for his nose. So this is a maple leaf that I just cut the seed part out of. I'm gonna use that for his nose and put it there. And for his ears, you wanna maybe tuck one under the leaf and another one above it. Outside I'm going to put that right there for his nose. Now we have his, his tail, his eyes, his ears, and his nose, but I think he could use some feet. So I'm going to just take a maple leaf like this, fold it in half, and cut it for his feet and his hands. Make his feet a little bit bigger than his hands. Once you've got it kind of arranged like I do, then you just glue it down. So we're going to start by moving this.
that's our squirrel leaf. Today's second book, guys, is by Whitney Kostboff, and it is called Do You Know Carlisle Moose Loves to Bugle? But before we read the book, I'm going to try to make a moose out of balloons. Do you see these balloons? You guys, I don't know if you were watching when I made the octopus, the moose. I might need a little help. It's been a while since I've done it. See this wonderful book here? This is the Balloon Animals book, and you can actually find this, and it gives you directions on how to make all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to open it up to the moose page, because I have made moose before. It's just been a while. And what's kind of cool is when you make a moose, you actually can make a reindeer or a moose. It just depends on how their ears are turned. Isn't that weird? OK, so we're going to get started. We need one. That happens. Let's try again. That's why I brought four balloons, just in case. You never know when one is going to go pop. OK, so OK, that's perfect. I'm going to put that right there. And then you let a little bit of air out so that you can tie the knot. And it kind of makes the balloon more pliable. And then it says to begin with one little tie up here. And then another little twist right there. And then you bend it over like this. And you twist it like that. Well, if I turn them this way, it's a reindeer, you see? But if I turn them this way, it's moose antlers. And then we make a little neck. I learned a lot of my animals online. There's all kinds of YouTube videos that you can watch. So there's his front legs. And there's his body. He's going to have a little short body because I'm starting to run out of balloons. And there's his little tail. And I think his face is upside down. There we go. OK. And then I have eyes. Do you see the eyes? I'm going to put them on the moose. And here is our friend, Carlisle, the moose. There we go. What do you guys think? See his little legs and his tail and his belly and his front legs. And there's his horns. It's not quite turned right. His antlers, his eyes, and his nose. He's a moose. Stay right there, Carlisle. You guys ready? OK, I am. Here we go. Do you know Carlisle Moose loves to bugle? Do you guys know what a bugle is? A bugle is a kind of horn. You're about to find out. And it is by author Whitney Kostboff. Thank you, Whitney, for sending in your book. Again, very appreciated. And thank you for your patience in getting to reading it. Carlisle Moose was a young and happy moose. He loved to play and eat and all the other things young moose boys love. But unlike most moose, Carlisle had a special talent. Carlisle loved to play bugle. It's kind of like a trumpet, but without all the keys. Carl's mom, Carlisle's mom, always taught him the, that bugling could be a lot of fun, but not to bugle at night. You don't want to wake the neighbors, Mama Moose would say. You know Papa Moose needs his sleep. He works hard all day. One day, while Carlisle was playing with his friends, they dared him to bugle at night and see if he could wake up his neighbors. I don't know, Carlisle said. Mama says I should try not to wake others up. 
but his friends said it would be fun and that they'd stay up all night waiting to hear his bugle. Come on, Carlisle, do it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'll wait up all night, said the squirrel. Bad little squirrel. Rah. Naughty squirrel. Carlisle thought to himself, I guess it won't really hurt anyone. After all, I'm an expert bugler. Others would be lucky to hear me. And so he dreams that all of the families will be happy to hear him bugling. Do you think that that's true? Do you think they're going to be happy? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Carlisle watched as each hour passed, and he wanted to stay up until midnight and ring in the new day with his extra special sound. And here's some Mighty Moose snacks and a picture of his mom and dad and his baseball glove and his baseball and his bugle and his clock, which says 1155. Eight, nine, ten. It's almost midnight. Finally, it was almost midnight. Carlisle cleared his throat <coughs> and drank some water. Go, 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 go. And he stood up and he shook himself out. Do you guys do that when you wake up? You get up and you... <coughs> No? Okay. This was going to be his best bugle of all bugles in all the world. Look, he's got a big musical note up on his wall. He bugled long and loud, hoping the whole world would hear. Is that what, what you would want to hear in the middle of the night? I don't think so. Having a hard time turning the pages again. All right. Ah, Papa Moose jumped down of bed, hitting his head on the lamp. Mama Moose was startled too and fell out of bed and bumped her knee on her dresser. Ouch, they both cried. Uh-oh. Some neighbors lights turned on and angry yells could be heard up and down the entire block i'm trying to sleep what was that quiet it's pretty much what i expected i did it thought carlisle proudly and he smiled wide until he saw mama and papa moose there they are do you think they're happy Carlisle, is there something wrong? Why did you bugle in the middle of the night? Carlisle hung his head. I thought it would be fun for the whole world to hear me, he mumbled. He suddenly felt bad for having woken the neighborhood and for causing his parents to get hurt. Do you know now why I asked you not to bugle at night, Carlisle? Yes, Mama, so that I don't wake everyone and so that others don't get hurt. Carlisle said as he looked at his hoofs, too ashamed to look at her in the eyes. Do you know what hoofs are? Some animals, they don't have hands and feet or paws. They have hooves. These are hooves. They're like little hard pieces of, I don't know what, what they're made of, but like cows have hooves and horses have hooves and moose have hooves. Or would you say mooses? I think it's moose. Mama Moose lifted Carlyle's face and looked him sternly in the eyes. And then she smiled and said, I'm glad you know now that it was wrong and you won't do it again, will you? No, Mama. Good. Also, do you know that I love you? Do you know that I care? Do you know that I always, always will be there? Do you know that I'll miss you if you ever go? That's what I want you to know. So he didn't really get in trouble, but he knows better now. Carlisle hugged Mama, then crawled into bed. I love you too, Mama, he smiled and said. And that is the end of the story. Whitney Cosboth was raised in Nebraska City, Nebraska, and is still a Nebraska girl at heart, though she now happily resides in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is close to where I was born with her husband, Corey, and a baby on the way. And there's no picture of her, sadly. 
but she's a beautiful young lady, and she wrote this wonderful book, and I want to thank you, Whitney. Oh, hello everybody. I'm Whitney Costable with You Caught Me, trying to play my bugle. I'm not great, but I'm learning. So this is a bugle. Have you ever heard of a bugle before? I had never heard of a bugle when I was a kid. But as I got older, I learned about the bugle. And I chose to write a book about a moose who loves to bugle. Carlisle Moose Loves to Bugle is the name of the book. And Carlisle Moose is actually good at it, unlike me. Did you know that the bugle is actually the simplest of the brass instruments? There's no buttons. Kind of looks like a trumpet. But you have to learn how to play it. With just your mouth. So, I'm learning. Maybe someday I'll be able to play something, maybe not. We'll see. It was actually invented a long time ago and used to communicate between soldiers and officers in the army. And they would tell their orders and instructions by bugling. <laughs> that would be me. Bugling to my husband to please help me with the dishes. I don't know if he knows the instructions yet, but we're working on it. Why am I wearing a hat and a sweater? Because I live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I don't know if you can see it on the map all the way back there, but it is starting to get cold. I don't know where you live, but we have to bundle up every time we go outside up here. So hat and sweater it is. Anyways, <laughs> I better get back to practicing. It's good talking to you all. I hope you enjoy. Carlisle Moose loves to bugle at it. Uh, let me know what you think. Have a good night. All right, guys, that's it from Moose and Squirrel. Goodbye.